right. Um, hi, guys. I'm Katie. I am not in my normal setup today. Uh, we're visiting family, so um, I'm just, uh, you know, making it work here in the in the guest bedroom. <laughs> uh, but I am Katie. I was part of Den 18, so Denmark 18, and I'm a tech coach and um, lover of cheese. Uh, cheese is my favorite food. When I moved into the apartment that I currently live in uh, 10 years ago, I basically moved into the neighborhood first, the spit cheese shop. And <laughs> here I am uh, 11 years later, still loving cheese. Um, in addition to being an innovator, I'm a trainer and coach. And so I hope to share today some ideas for getting you to make some good cheese boards. Um, so our goals for this session today are to bring people together around good food and friends, um, account for the needs of all of our eaters that are at our party today, and uh, design a board that meets, pun intended, all the needs of uh, party goers. I love a good cheese pun, hence the title of uh, the session. All right, so I am a 100% a turophile, and a turophile is a lover of cheese or a cheese connoisseur. Do I have any other turophiles in the session today? Melissa says, yes, she is. Yes, and I'd love it if uh, no matter you are a cheese lover or not, drop whatever your favorite cheese is in the chat. And let's see what those are. My favorite cheese is called uh, Rubiola, and it's from Italy. It's a soft style cheese, and it's just cream bowl and spreadable, and I love it. Uh, Tom is a vegan cheese lover. We welcome all cheeses of all types, so no worries about that. Uh, she doesn't know the official name, but she knows she likes it, and that's what matters. <laughs> Kim. Uh, Gear, yes, that is great. Um, melted on a French onion soup. Love some Gear. Gear melts really nicely. So if you're making a, a grilled cheese, that is a way to go. All right. So um, this is just your little mini tutorial on becoming a, a little lover of cheese yourself and to entertain with some cheese. All right. So First thing I wanna do is talk about types of cheese based on texture. We have basically four different categories. So we have soft cheeses. These are things that are in their solid state soft already. Uh, so mozzarellas, brie's, um, ricotta. Um, and then we can move up in texture to a little bit harder, which is gonna be a semi-soft cheese. So this is gonna be something like a young Gouda or a Fontina or a Havarti. So something that's sliceable, but very soft, you can slice it maybe with a butter knife. Uh, then we move up to our, our semi-hard cheeses, which would be like a young manchego um, or an aged gouda or a, uh, a young cheddar. So again, something you can be able to slice with a knife, but it may take a little more uh, texture or force. And lastly, the hardest one is the hard cheeses. So these are our super aged cheeses. You might even find some of those nice little crystals in them, which like have salt, um, so yummy, a lot of umami in those crystals. Um, so those are our hard cheeses. Yes, hey, Teresa, hey, Kristen. All right, so that's our cheese on types. Now let's talk about milks. We've got four types of milks here. Um, so we got our cow's milk, our sheep's milk, our goat's milk, and our nut's milk. And so we wanna keep those vegan friends coming to the party in mind. And so we're gonna have a wide array of, when we're making our cheese board, a variety of cheeses on our, uh, on our cheese board. So um, whatever you want to have your cheese board, I like to have a variety of all the different types of milks. All right, so here are our basic elements of our cheese board whenever we put it together. So we want to have our cheese, of course, and kind of have a variety of the groups above. So different textures. I like to have, you know, a soft cheese, a, a medium soft, medium hard cheese, and then a super hard cheese. Then um, we got our carbs. So those can be crackers, breads, biscuits for you people in the UK, or cookies for the Americans. Um, some veggies. Um, so that can be, you know, carrot sticks. Um, and then we want both savory and sweet options for these. And we want, you know, even some gluten-free options for these for some people that may be um, celiac or have dietary restrictions. All right, then we're going to have our accompaniment. Uh, and I like to have pickles, olives, meats, and sweets. So chocolate is great to put on a, a cheese board. It really accompanies and pairs with our uh, cheeses really nicely. 
And lastly, dips. So we could have mustard, jams, hummus, yogurt, um, all of those things add nicely to a cheese board um, to make a really great variety for all the people coming to our party. Here's some, there are some really great videos on TikTok. You can look up hashtag cheese talk and you can see a lot of great content in there. So I did not make any content. This is where I found a lot of these videos um, that I'm gonna show you in the next things about um, where to um, adding to your cheese board. So here we are. This person says that your cheese board should have cheese, meat, produce, love figs, love figs, crunch, yeah, that texture and some dips and garnish. So that is one person's take on the elements that should be in a cheese board. Ooh, peach jam. I will, thank you, Kim. I love that, love that. All right, so let's get into presentation because really when we're talking about cheese board, we are all about presentation and how it looks. You can see these grazing boards or cheese boards are a huge trend right now when you go to weddings or parties. Um, so making a, a grazing board or a cheese board that can meet so many people's needs is important. And the aesthetic is part of it. I love this cheese cutting uh, method. And so you're cutting in wedges and there's different ways to cut into the wedges um, and lay them out on the board so nicely. If you're a math person, this is definitely a task for you. Use some of those geometry skills and um, laying out your triangles and making a nice board. So usually you start out with making and cutting the cheeses into nice wedges um, or and then you build all of your other things around the cheese. So here's a good tutorial for cutting brie. You don't cut it across the wedge, you actually cut it down the edge of the wedge and then cut it into smaller pieces. So um, cutting those um, ahead of time um, can be really helpful to, to those coming up to your cheese board who may need some assistance using tools. If you can pre-cut things into small biteable pieces, that's gonna help people a lot. All right, um, here's some other cheese cutting methods. So this is a, a round cheese uh, and they cut it out into wedges and they space them out. The alternating wedge I love, and so you place them every other and you can see that then there's two sides you can grab from. And then making a river. So rivers in your art, charcuterie boards or cheese boards are very popular, making small pieces and winding them down the middle of the board is um, a very popular method. So triangles, making little pieces, cut those pieces. Don't just put the wedge of cheese on the board. We wanna do the cutting. We wanna help people out in getting what they want most efficiently. All right, so also we can do some arrangements with our meats. This is called a salami rose and you just use a jar and you can place the salami around it and then you flip it upside down and you have your little rose on your board. So a really nice, easy way to uh, jazz up that board. Also popular, you can kind of see at the bottom of the slide right down here is, um, right, right around here is like a salami river, they call it. And so you fold them into quarters and you can place them um, like a river. All right, here's another way to do some meat arranging. So this is prosciutto. You can fold it back and forth like a ribbon and then you can place it on your board and it will look really nice next to the cheese. Um, so that is just some ways and some ways to think about your presentation, which is really important when doing a cheese board. All right, so what I want us to do now is I want us to build our own boards. And I am a big fan of Canva. And so what I've made for us today, if you've never used Canva, this is gonna be your time to try it out, is a cheese board template. And so I'm gonna go to Canva and I love as a teacher that I can just go to the share button and I can select use this template and I can copy this link and I can easily share it with my students in the chat, just like this, or in my LMS, whatever I'm using and I can get in and make a cheese board. So what I want you guys to do, and I'm gonna do my little demo for you. So you'll get to this page. Um, let me share this tab instead. So you will see this when you go to the link and you're gonna select use as template and it will make your own copy of this template for you. So what I want you to do is build out your board with your favorite cheeses and Canva has so many elements that you can pick from. So I go over here to elements and I'm just gonna type in, let's just start with the easy one, brie. And you may think, oh, are they gonna have brie? 
they have brie. Look at all of these little brie options that I have. So I'm gonna add a little brie to my board. And then maybe I want to add, um, this one actually looks like a nice stinky cheese. I like that on my board. Um, and then I want to also then think about some of those accompaniments that I talked about. So let's look at crackers. All right, so I got, um, let's see. I'm gonna go with, I actually like this cracker up here. Little pile of crackers. And then you can just go and think about all the things that you might want to build on your board. So I'd love it if you guys build out your boards while I continue talking about how these cheese boards relate to our classroom. So I'd love it if you build out your board, you can either share it in the chat as a link or you can share it on social media. I would love to see them. So while you're playing and playing with that, I'm gonna go back to talking about cheese boards and how they connect to our classroom. So when we're building a cheese board, it is a lot like building a choice board in our classroom. And we really wanna build these cheese boards and choice boards to meet all of the needs of our party goers and all of the needs of our students. So I talked about, you know, thinking about those vegans that are coming to your party, make sure that they are accounted for, thinking about those gluten free people that are coming to your party, making sure there's something crunchy for them, like a carrot stick that would be comparable to that, you know, crunchy cracker for the person that can eat gluten or have some gluten free crackers that will work for them. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're accounting for all those pieces of the universal design for learning. Cheese boards are a totally engaging part of your party. People stand around it. That is where they are going to talk to one another. They're gonna talk about what's on the board. That's gonna lead them to interact in other ways. We want our choice boards in our classroom to do the same thing. We want those to be a point of engagement and collaboration for students. We also want that representation piece. So again, we wanna make sure that every student sees themselves in the choice board and has something on that choice board that relates to them and um, is authentic for their experience. So we have this like uh, this little image right here of this uh, stinky cheese. That is not gonna be for everyone, okay? That cheese, stinky cheese is not gonna be for everyone, but there are gonna be a few kids in your class that are gonna like that stinky cheese option on the choice board, right? That one that may be kind of out there and may, you know, maybe a little more advanced or it may be just for a special kind of kid. So ha don't like avoid those stinky cheese options, put them on the board. We also want them represented. So like this um, cheese down here in the bottom uh, left, this is a Oaxacan cheese. So we wanna make sure that our choice boards are culturally relevant, that we're representing all of the students in our class. Um, and so we're gonna have something that everyone can relate to. And then again, you know, there may be people in our, in our group that aren't gonna be eating cheese at all. We want some options like olives, produce, other things that they're gonna be able to enjoy along right alongside those classmates that are eating the cheese. And then we want some action and expression options. We want things that you can pick up, like I talked about the cutting and making things um, the right size for people. We don't want people to have to uh, get involved and get to, um, you know, have a barrier of that knife or have a barrier of anything else preventing them from accessing the items on the choice board or the cheese board. So really thinking about those things. So cheese boards, cheese boards as choice boards, we want variety. So just like um, we want to provide variety of milks and textures, we want a variety of options on our cheese board. Cutting, remember to chunk your information and make it accessible to all students. Presentation is key. Those boards we saw looked beautiful. We want our choice boards in our class to look beautiful. I love Adobe Spark, Canva. Oh, I put Canvas. That's my being in Canvas all the time. Uh, brain. Uh, Canva and Genially are great tools to create beautiful choice boards with. And again, that engagement or the collaboration piece. We want people to come together over these choice boards and cheese boards. And no one's grazing alone, except for maybe me. All right. So um, I would just love to see your cheese boards. If anyone wants to uh, share their screen, I'm going to stop sharing now. You can feel free to, to, to share your screen or um, put on um, uh, social media or drop in the chat a link to your cheese board. I'm gonna drop in a chat a link to my presentation and the resources that I shared today. 
Anyone have anything to say or share about cheese boards or choice boards? Hey, Teresa. Hi. Hi, Katie. Yeah. Quick question. What do you recommend in real life for little plates or little uh, napkins or what's, I'm not real good with a whole cocktail, carry a drink and plate thing. <laughs> so what, what do you suggest? Yeah, that is tricky. That is definitely tricky. They do have like um, these plates that can go on top of cups, which is kind of unwieldy. I suggest that if you can just have a few spaces around where people can sit, so those that want to sit can, uh, little tables, I think, and then yeah, have little, I like to use uh, reusable plates. I know a lot of people like to use paper plates uh, when they have parties. Um, at least that's a very American thing. Um, <laughs> but I like little, little size plates because um, these are just little snacks along the way. Thanks, um, one more thing apropos yeah. of the mason jar idea. Um, during the height of the COVID times when people were uh, trying to uh, eliminate like contact, I saw online a lot of little mini jar cuteries that you could just pick up oh. and go rather than graze on the, the boards, which I thought was so cute. Yeah, it, it definitely is cute. And it, COVID is definitely something still to take into account. I haven't honestly, I one reason I didn't make a whole board today, I was like, where am I going to, who's going to eat it but me? Um, <laughs> I was like, am I going to make like a $100 cheese board? Because cheese boards can be pricey to put together. I love going to Trader Joe's and Aldi to get my cheeses. Um, but they still can be pricey to put together. I was like, I'm not going to put together a whole one to just eat it alone. So yeah, definitely thinking making smaller cheese boards is definitely an option. I saw these really cute ones on um, TikTok the other day where they got these letter-shaped boxes from, um, I guess, a craft store. And they made, for each attendee at the party, they had their first letter of their name. And it was a whole little ch charcuterie box for that person which was cute and definitely would take away from the, uh, the sharing aspect. <laughs> What's team Moose? I feel like I'm out of the, oh, Moose partner. All right, did anyone have a board they wanted to share? Hi, Katie, sorry. That's a board from SWE 17 and Carlos hey. is my, uh... It was my coach. Oh, cute. Adorable. <laughs> but then we thought about, because I were in Sweden, moose me on the cheese board. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want to try it now. I am not, I'm, I'm a lover of all meat, so I'm not opposed to any. <laughs> Anyone else have anything else they love putting on cheese boards? Well, thank you so much for coming to the session. And I'd love for you to just grapes. That is good. Yes. Oh, Kristen shared hers. Let's go open it. I love it. Yes. Oh, you made like a wedding cake. That's so great. That my dream is to have a cheese wedding cake. I'll be honest. Totally, totally a dream. I'll share mine. Um, that I did. Let's see. This is the one that I put together. I really like figs and olives on all of my boards. I like a little chocolate. Um, so uh, thank you guys so much. And um, please feel free if you make your cheese board later. Ooh, chutney, yes. Uh, if you make your cheese board later, share them with me. I'd love to see them. But cheese boards and choice boards are, are one and the same. <laughs> Have a good day, guys.